Needles in the Haystack, Link Prediction, the Big Data Way. Have you noticed that people are connected? And that these connections seem to grow and change over time? Trying to unravel these links gets very complicated, very fast. And yet, this is exactly what we've set out to do. Our goal is to understand how networks evolve over time, and more specifically, predict where and when new links will occur. Okay, let me break it down. The link prediction problem asks, given a snapshot of a network at time t, can we predict the new links that will occur at time t plus 1? Well, we think the answer is yes. Using tools from evolutionary computation, we have developed a link predictor that exhibits a thousand-fold improvement over random link prediction. Now, before I tell you a little bit about how we did this, let's look at the data. We're interested in data, and I mean big data. So we're going to look at one of the largest social networks in existence, Twitter. Here is a snapshot of interactions between people in one week. Our goal is to predict links that will occur in the next week based on the information that we have about their interactions this week. Now this might sound easy, but when we zoom in on a piece of the network, I think you'll see why this is an incredibly hard problem. It's like trying to predict needles in the haystack. So you might be wondering how we did this. Well, we looked at pairs of users in our network and measured things like how similar are the words that they're using in their tweets. We then threw in a bunch of other indices that other researchers have found to be helpful for link prediction in various types of networks. Using an evolutionary algorithm, we found a way to combine all of these indices, thus capitalizing on many sources of information that we have. And so, we have some pretty cool results. As you can see, index B is a strong component of our predictor, while the blue circle in 16th place suggests that index F is not. This gives us clues about possible mechanisms that might be driving this network's evolution. I'm glad you asked that. One way of measuring success comes from looking at the receiver operating curve shown here. This curve shows that we did really well. The true positive rate is higher than our false positive rate. There are a lot of other details that we couldn't include in this short video. So stay tuned for our full paper which details our analysis and results.